Monday happy hour. This is the Lives of Wrestling podcast presented to you by Podcast Heat right here, wherever you get your podcasts. I, of course, am John Alman. I'm joined, as always, by the wives themselves, Mrs. Giovanna Angle and Mrs. Kim Warren. Ladies, how are we? Very good. How you doing? This this is a big week because you see that other you see that other big <laughs> yes! superstar right there. We teased her a few weeks ago. That's Michelle McCool, and she is the most, flawless yeah. Michelle McCool. Well, thank flawless. you. Most people most people just refer to me as Undertaker's wife. So <laughs> I, I do have I do have a name, and I appreciate that intro. <laughs> uh, absolutely, Michelle so McCool. Funny. I mean, you you are very much well traveled and well established in your own right. And you have this tremendous duality of not just being a wife of a wrestler, but a wrestler herself and a badass one at that. Time. So, <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. It was a yeah. no brainer, a no brainer to have you on here. And this was a Kim Warren project. Uh, Kim, why is Michelle perfect for this gig here? Oh, she I mean, well, first of all, look, look at her. She's perfect. <laughs> She's um, super cool, and I a championship. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. That's yep. so awesome. I know there was <laughs> like a little bit of a thing, like after they changed the Divas Championship. Like, did you like being called a diva? I, I didn't. Cool. I did not care. I, I could care less. Diva, sports entertainer, like yeah. butterfly belt, no butterfly belt. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't sweat the small stuff like that. I. I don't care. I mean, I've been called way worse than a diva, and I've been big called way worse than a sports entertainer, so it doesn't bother me. <laughs> For sure. Well, I, whatever, I, I whatever you may be, we are so glad that you are here on the Wise of Wrestling podcast with us. Thank and you. as we do every week, we have an opening toast. Uh, ladies, let's get it underway right away. Uh, this I need is... this one more than ever, oh. actually. Do, do you? <laughs> Fantastic. Having um, a little bit of a rough start here for me. Now, Michelle, we typically uh, indulge in adult beverages. Should you choose, you are more than welcome to. Uh, should you okay. opt not to, that's more than fine as well. You know what? I don't drink because I've got a smart mouth. And like I can only imagine if I were to drink how <laughs> sarcastic and smart mouth I would be. So I've got a little caffeine here. That's good. good for you. Uh, well, cheers to uh, Michelle McCool for joining us here on the Wives of Wrestling. I need it. Yes. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you all. Cheers. With me. Cheers. <laughs> Mm. Giovanna, you're on I got my water. So you're on that water diet, Giovanna? I, my my sinuses are messed up. I got to pick up the kids la later, so <laughs> I could be good. <laughs> I luckily have Randy here today, so he can pick up. Nice. He nice. can do the pick up for me. So I guess Michelle, I guess wait a minute. Place to, we'll go, you got yeah, idea. just yeah. real quick, right? So like after I leave here, I have to go to my house, and I have a million things going on there, and I know that you're in the middle. Oh, good gosh. Building. Yes. How is uh, that going? Are you almost done? Yo. Or just <laughs> no, 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 no. No. And y'all, people would die. Like, we found our dreamland actually in the same neighborhood that we were in, but it's like back on Barton Creek, which is beautiful creek here in Austin. And, um, you know, 15 acres. So we're like, let's just get out mm. on the land and build our house. It won't take that long. So we. <laughs> People would literally die. So we rolled a modular home through this uppity neighborhood. I mean, people were That's talking good. and running their mouths, <laughs> put it on our property. And we've been living in that for 14 months now, waiting for our house oh, to wow. um, be finished. Wow. Yeah, so I'm oh ready to kind God. of like uh, blow it up and um, <laughs> I move on out. But we're getting close. We're like a few months away from our um, like barn dominium guest quarters and our gym being done. Oh, nice. And so, so we're getting there, but, whew, you know, Keep we're large. Happy. We added a child. And I'm like, <laughs> I, mm, yeah. That is it's crazy. So, yeah, it is crazy. Michelle, how many I, kids do you guys have? So I have a nine-year-old and I just recently adopted a uh, little boy and he's two and a half. And oh. he's so cute. <laughs> he knows he's cute. Oh, gosh, right. <laughs> Isn't it the yeah, best? He, oh, yeah. yeah. He had the coolest little haircut at the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Movie. His hair grows all wonky, so I have to keep it in a mohawk because it's like crazy. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, He's too cool already. He had to have a mohawk at two. Oh, my gosh. That's oh awesome. Gosh. So that's what I want to start with. What has that adjustment been like? Because now your husband, the freaking undertaker, is... Mm -hmm. He's off the road, finally 100% retired, you know, every now and then pops up to say hello, but outside <laughs> of that, uh, you finally have him home and he is there to be dad. 
what has that adjustment been like for you the past couple of years? Yeah, it's nice. I mean, he's, you know, y'all know he's retired like the last 15 years, I think. And, uh, <laughs> long ago, Fit Finley gave him the nickname Santa Claus because he would come out once a year. So it wasn't like he was <laughs> on the road. He wasn't on the road like all the time. So I've been really fortunate that, you know, with with our kiddos that he's been here to to be dad. And it's so, you know, so fun to watch. So if he's truly home for good, which I do believe this time he is, um, it's nice. You know, I mean, there's times where I'm like, don't you have somewhere to go? Maybe <laughs> y'all know in like a couple days, but no, it's it's nice having him here. <laughs> How is Kaya with her brother? Oh, she wants to sleep in his crib. She wants to get him up in the morning. She's yeah, she's super sweet with him, but then she can argue like she's two years old with him too. And I'm like, really? Like you know, you're yeah. nine, he's two, but it's it's, I have good. That it's sweet. On. I have that going on right now with uh, Anthony. He just turned 12 and Brooklyn is five. And it's like, <laughs> I, I can't even believe how much he tries to drive her crazy. Like, I know. Purpose. Yeah, it's seriously. Crazy. I'm like, golly. Yeah. 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 Wait, Man. wait, just wait. Oh, I, I can only imagine. <laughs> I, I can only imagine. For a while, she was like, I shouldn't even say this, but it's coming. Kind of like she goes to Christian. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this, but I've already started. Um, <laughs> she goes to. She goes to a Christian school. So I know it was coming from like Bible standpoint. She's like, you know, so he was an orphan. And so she's like, say he was an orphan. And mm -hmm. I'm like, you got to quit saying like, and it was out of, it wasn't out of malice, you know? No. She's like, he's, I'm like, you need to quit calling the boy an orphan. I was like, cause <laughs> I know in a few, I know in a few years, you're going to do that. Like out of malice, you're going to be like, you're just an orphan. And, and you know, he's going to be like, they chose me. They didn't choose you. you right. Just, you know, <laughs> showed up. So you better <laughs> watch your smart little mouth. <laughs> I think that's a normal reaction because my ki um my daughters they were saying that to Joseph and said you're you were adopted and I'm like Juliana so he, you know the greatest thing about Joseph is because he's older he didn't he, like he didn't look at it as he's just like they're just right being, you know yeah just being little stinkers but yeah, uh yeah but I had to like put her to the side I said you can't say that anymore you know, yeah. like, okay, because one day you're going to say it in a mean way. <laughs> and it's, exactly. it's going to come. I, I was know, an asshole. I, I used to say that to my brother when we were little. I used to be like, <laughs> mommy found you in the garbage. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. I don't know why. I was in like, the garbage. Oh, asshole. Was oh. a garbage pail kid. Gar you, see, you see the standards we have here on the Wives uh, of Wrestling uh, podcast. There you go. <laughs> Some good little Christian uh, podcast that, uh, uh, I, I that you guys bring a much better vibe to than this. Uh, my mom should have sent me to Christian school. <laughs> you might have had a little bit of a cleaner mouth. Just saying there. I school. might have. But no promises. I don't know. It's so weird. My kids don't curse. I have such a potty mouth. I... I curse like every other word usually right. and my kids do not curse i michael's 19 years old he won't curse if i tell him to i'm like would you just call him an asshole already he's like no <laughs> mom do as i say yeah. not as i do That's the you get it all for him <laughs> yeah exactly. they just don't they're so much oh. better than me <laughs> oh gosh Michelle, oh, no the kids Kaya, uh, go ahead sorry. by all means no no kaya comes home from school it's like mommy you know I'm going to get a swear jar and I don't even cuss, but she's like, yeah. you know, bitch is just a female dog. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> but that doesn't mean you can start you using can it, you know? Right. Like, yeah. So she's, mm, she's always pushing. I and love that. Great. Mm. Your kids, great. there was always this almost mystique around the undertaker, right? Because the undertaker would never break character. And he, he very much was protective of that. And you guys chose to kind of keep your family, a very much a close knit situation as well with your kids. You were not putting them on social media really. And then once he retired and the documentary came out, that kind of changed. What was the mentality behind that change? Um, well, that wasn't intentional with the documentary. We had filmed it for so many years that by the time it came out, Kaya was three, four years older. So I didn't mind, you know, the, the younger Kaya being on the documentary so much. Um, and then as far as Colt, we didn't post that picture first. Freaking somebody else posted a Hall of Fame picture with him on there. So um, we still try to protect uh, protect them as much as possible. I'll send stuff, you know, to close friends of Kaya, but not people are crazy, man. 
People yeah. are legitimately crazy. I'm sure Giovanna mm -hmm. and Kim, y'all both dealt mm -hmm. with some some crazy showing up your doorsteps and you know, mm -hmm. they, pe pe people have no boundaries and I will lose my mind real fast on yes. somebody messing with, you know, either one of the kiddos. So Agreed. I'm just trying That's to keep them protected. This is actually funny because randomly, do you guys get wedding invitations once in a blue moon? Yes, yes, <laughs> okay, all the time, God. all the time. No. Weird. Yeah, yeah. all the time it. it's like we're for it takes us five minutes to go through our family to make sure yeah. that okay this isn't one of our relatives we're like it's a fan so i randomly we will get a wedding invitation and there's times where me and kurt were like man i just want to just crash our wedding <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine oh yeah i had three cops follow me in the neighborhood one time because a 911 call said that i'd killed my husband with a sledgehammer why Ironically enough, the, the WrestleMania after he wrestled Triple H, yes, I was sitting there talking with, and I'm like one of those people, if I'm telling the truth, I feel guilty. Like, I feel like I'm lying if I'm in a pressure situation, you know? I'm coming through the neighborhood, guard at gates, you know, and I'm talking to a girlfriend, and I was like, dang, there's a cop behind me, but I, like, I wasn't speeding. And so I pull into the house, and I'm like, crap, there's three cops. I'm like, what is going no. on? They're like, ma'am, is your husband home? And I'm like, yeah can you tell me what's going on they're like no we just need to make sure your husband's home i'm like what is going on as we're walking into the garage like you know my heart's pounding i'm like yeah. oh, i'm thinking I'm... the worst right obviously. and so i go in the garage and i kid you not he's coming out of the shower in the furthest place in the house and i'm just yelling like babe babe you know babe we finally get to the back of the house he walks out in his towel there's three cops behind me he's like what is going on what and then they happened? finally told me yeah they freaking told me somebody called 911 said i'd killed him with a sledgehammer they let us listen to the call i'm like people Can't are they crazy find out who it was, was, <laughs> oh because God. of triple h i'm like does that really right. even uh, i mean right that's real <laughs> sledgehammer <laughs> we've had <laughs> It, yeah, Jesus. like he he's died several times. It's, yes, he's gotten to the point he's where we had to several die. times. Yeah, he, we, he is a he dead is a man. I mean, come in on. In all fairness, but we've had you know we've had people show up. We're sitting there eating family dinner and cops on the door, and I'm like, come on. Like we had to tell our family, like if something happens, y'all, we will let you know. <laughs> Just don't listen to the rest. Wow. Randy's yeah, they're crazy. dad got a phone call like twice saying that he died. Why? Like Ramsey, it doesn't. I, I don't. It's know. so like, stupid. Somebody, yeah, somebody called him up and was like, "Hey, I'm so sorry to hear about your son." And he was like, "Hear what?" And he was like, "Oh, he passed away." And and Bob called Randy and he's like, "Hello." And he's like, "What's up, Dad?" And he's like, oh, "I don't get it. Just just making sure you're alive." <laughs> I'm like, what? It's so What's crazy. That? I know. I'm so surprised yeah. nobody called us and said. Oh, someone stole your gold medals, Kurt. Like something, yeah, something shit. stupid. Yeah. Something right. stupid. That was Kurt. They will say some dumb shit like that to him. And he'll freak oh, out. Oh my gosh. That's he'll so freak out. Yeah. Oh. It's not people hard are weird. To, not people hard to read. People are so strange. I, I don't uh. get it either. I don't get it. I think we need to talk about how the, the underrated part of that story is the Undertaker is standing there naked in a towel talking to <laughs> The only thing the cops you should have right that now. on purpose. <laughs> yeah, why on. are you thinking about it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, like, the visual, I'm just I'm processing that. Yeah, and he's like always, you know, cal calm as can be. Nothing really phases him. I'm like, do you not understand? I'm freaking out here. There's three cops behind me. And he's just like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm, like, I'm alive. That's all you honey. got? I'm, That's all I'm you got. I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. So, Michelle, I've been dying to ask you this because we've covered the stories at length of how both of these ladies met their husbands. And... Yours is a different situation because you were a co-worker. And yeah. sometimes that can be a dicey situation. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the <laughs> ideology in that? And what was the hesitance I like? I would love to you? hear this. <laughs> All right. Well, the, story, on this one. the story he told at Hall of Fame was a total lie. I did not chase him whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that, I hope the whole world. Yeah. Straight. Yeah, people are like, why didn't you cry during his speech? I'm like, because he was lying. Like, lying. What, what do you want me to do? Like, <laughs> um, I, no, but I mean, yeah, we, so we worked together. <clears throat> I've told it a million times. I did not want to meet him or Kane when I went to work. Like, they were creepy. You know, Kane's the nicest guy in the world, as y'all know. And then Mark was still, I was like, you know, hi, how are you doing? Pay my respects. But I always got to the ring early, uh, worked out just he liked my work ethic. He started like working with me in the ring. I didn't think anything of it. I am small town, very naive. Um, just thought, you know, he was being the nice guy that everybody says he is. 
And um, so he helped me out in the ring a little bit. Um, I swear for months he would court me as opposed Trying to, to what show you some he told the world. Yeah, like people crack you back. Me. Yeah, there were yeah, <laughs> there were a few. <laughs> there were <laughs> there were a few people like Charmel, Tori, a few of my girlfriends that were like they call me Mimi. They're like Mimi. Uh, I think Taker like he's into you. I'm like oh, I'm not even like into long hair <laughs> tattoo guys. Like I. And now I'm like awkward. Like I still got to respect him. I still got to shake his hand. And now everybody's telling me this guy's into me. I'm like, oh, this is weird. So um, <laughs> then we went on a European tour, which are brutal, as y'all know. And I got super sick. I ended up in the hospital for 16 days. I was oh, wow. complete, completely yeah. out of it. Yeah, I literally almost died. And um, so that yeah. happened when we were overseas in a third world country where they're, they've got a hanger from the ceiling. Uh, <laughs> with an IV in my arm and um, point being that that tour I guess I don't remember that tour whatsoever but I guess I was in the trainer's room he had covered me up with his coat he'd gone to the ring mm -hmm. that night without his coat and so that's when people were kind of like you're really taking care of this girl you know no. um, I don't remember getting back to the states he had arranged for somebody to pick me up on the tarmac in Atlanta um, so I guess that he says you know it was during that tour where he realized like this girl means a lot to me Again, I have no idea. I have no recollection of that tour. So I didn't even know this was going on. Um, he called me while I was in the hospital. Didn't really think anything of it because, you know, some of the other guys, Chavo and JBL, and they had called. So I'm still thinking nothing of it. Yeah. Um, I finally got back to work and he asked if he could pick me up from the airport. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. But again, it's the Undertaker. How do I, do I say no? Like, screw right. you. Like, I don't know yeah. what to say. And so he does. Um, then the next day in the arena, you know, he's still just – super nice to me and um Aww, he was, he was so hard he was, he was working it's like hard. take the hits lady so, i know and then <laughs> and then he'll tell you and it is a true story we were throwing a football in the arena some of the boys were throwing a football and i happened to walk in and the ball had come like one of them couldn't catch apparently and, and the ball comes rolling over to me and i picked it up and i threw it and in the mccool family i was the youngest of all the kids and if you're gonna learn to throw a football you're gonna throw a spiral so i knew i know how to throw mm -hmm. football and so he's like, that did it. I was in love. I'm like, you're <laughs> no. so simple. Um, but after months and months and months, I finally, I literally said, if you'll stop bugging me, I will go out to dinner with you. Like, but that's it. And no, that's here we are. That's that's <laughs> who's it. more athletic between you two? Oh, I'll say like, me. He'll say him, but yeah. I'll say me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But I mean, me too. I mean, I know, right? Yeah. Me too. We'll, me too. Not to take anything away from him, but just right. I hate well, it when everybody's like, oh, Kaya, of course, you know, her dad's the undertaker. She gets all of her athleticism. I'm like, what right. kind of sense does that make? Like, oh, just right. assume. <laughs> exactly. What kind of challenges did you face in trying to mm. blaze your own path? Because you are the wife of the undertaker <clears throat> uh, of all time. Yeah. And, you, and you performed in an era where women were not necessarily put in positions to steal the show like they are now. So how did right. you go about blazing that path? Yeah, so that was hard in itself already because we literally were given two, maybe three minutes. I remember thinking like if we got six minutes, it was like, <clears throat> oh my gosh, you know, this is crazy. We have six minutes, two wow. of those being our entrance. Um, so that was hard in itself, you know, and I just fought every single week to do something to, to stand out or something to leave, you know, the fans wondering what would happen next. So <clears throat> I really do pride myself on working hard, pitching storylines. Um, when we started dating, we did hide it. Like I was like, I, you know, I, I don't want this to be a thing. He right. had a bus at the time. I literally would wait till the arena was emptied until I got on the bus. Wow. Um, I would, yeah. you know, still like get out, get, we would get there hours early just so I could get out early and go to the locker room. And <clears throat> so I hid it for a long time, knowing how a lot of people would react. Mm. Um, right. And then, you know, it came out and, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't, it's, I mean, it's still not fun because literally I'm just considered, you know, a channel to the undertaker, undertaker's wife, which obviously I love him to death, yeah, <clears throat> but right. it gets, it's pretty, pretty rough. And there were some people that, you know, I can, I, like I said, I've, I've got a mouth. I'm not afraid to stand up for myself. I am going to be nice, but if you're going to be stupid and, you know, say stupid things, I, we'll let you know. I think they're stupid. You know, and there were several people that I can think of that totally treated me one way when he wasn't around 
And then if Mark was around, they're treating me a different oh. way, you know? And oh. I mean, several, I, I hate stand that crap. people <clears throat> like that. Yeah. And you're me not going to say anything, right? Oh, I no, I like... literally said, no, I'd be like, look, I saw you five minutes ago in the hallway and you didn't talk to me. I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not, I'm not the one that's changed from five minutes right. ago. So don't talk to me now. Like, screw right. that. Right. Right. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, and I there's, think that's there's... one of the reasons why I like you so much. <laughs> You're not afraid to speak your mind. A lot of people Well, are. it's just stupid. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it, but it did start making it miserable because anything I did was because I dated The Undertaker. And I'm like, if y'all knew some of the girls that are dating some people around here, yeah. like I'm the only one right? catching. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually dating this dating, guy. Right. Like, You're not I, just, right. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm like. Good Lord. So it, it became really, I mean, it really led to me being kind of miserable back there and uh, oh. eventually leaving. Yeah. Oh, man. How long did you take? Uh, how long was it a secret for like years or? No, I don't remember exactly. Not years. Um, probably close to a year though, like yeah. seven, wow. eight months. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. Were you, do you like um, doing the singles matches better or are you more of the, uh, Tag. You're you're the first um, tag team champ too, right? Um, well, they split, for... they split the women's the the divas title into two for, for <laughs> because we didn't before. we didn't have women's tags. Yeah, that's what. Oh. Yeah, so we cut it in half. Yeah, oh, so we didn't have. Okay. We, yeah, we didn't even have them. <clears throat> um, I love working as singles, but me and Layla. I mean, I had more fun as Lay Cool than. Yeah, you guys any, were so much anything. fun. Oh, yeah, you guys it was, was so much fun that you, you you were such like heels and it was awesome. You could just abuse everybody. It was great. We That's so gotta mean. be so much fun. It's, it's so much fun. So it's much so much fun easier fucking shit on people and like oh. getting that reaction. And, yeah, uh, I don't it, know. Yeah, except the ones that are like, yeah, I'm cool with it, and then they close the door and they go to the higher ups and they're not Ooh. so cool with it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sure there were plenty of those too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A few in particular, but mm -hmm. for the most part, it was, yeah, it was fun. It's amazing yeah. to me because pro wrestling is an industry where respect is certainly not given. It is earned, right? And yeah. your husband is kind of looked at as the pinnacle of that. If I were to ask both Kim and Giovanna right now, I'm sure their husbands would say that The Undertaker is like the man in wrestling they probably yeah. respect most. Yeah. Um, how difficult isn't managing living with those kinds of expectations around you because you're just trying to live your life too and yet there's this figure who's almost considered like a godfather in wrestling yeah. godfather in the world like people yeah people they legitimately hated me just because i was married to him like there are people that <clears throat> they think there's they're possessive and they literally think this guy is you know theirs from watching him on tv um but it, yeah. it's hard. I mean, he'll tell you, he'll tell you the McCool is definitely keeping grounded. Like my dad's constantly telling people he's overrated. They're like, <laughs> 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 they'll, they'll, they'll be like, you know, what's it like I'm an undertaker? <laughs> uh, yeah. What's it like? I'm an undertaker's son-in-law. He's like, man, he's so overrated. I'm like, I'm totally using that dad. That's but, awesome. <laughs> I think but it's cool. I mean, it, it's cool. Brandy like that too. You have to, right? Yeah. I mean, Kai, yeah, Kai yeah. is constantly busting his shop. I mean, yep. Oof. Well, it's yeah. so funny. Like, uh, Brooklyn all of a sudden is into wrestling. And I was telling me, got these guys, um, she, every time she plays wrestling with Anthony, she's like, I want to be Bobby Ashley or, <laughs> or Drew McIntyre. And Randy's always like, Brooklyn, what, what about why me? can't you be me? Yeah. She's like, no. I know. Uh, yeah. It's so I funny. Know. It's so funny. Kaya, like, no, I like them, Dad. <clears throat> Kaya literally fell asleep at WrestleMania her first, I think, four years of life. Like, I swear, Mark, you know, he's normally on last and his dong would hit and she's like, yeah, conked out. And, <laughs> no. and so the, fir the first one she stays awake for is when he got beat by Brock. So oh, she's no. like, she's like, Daddy, why do you always lose? Oh. And he's like, <laughs> Let me tell you something, kid. I won for you know. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's so funny. Uh, she's she's starting, okay. she starting to see that her like you are who you are, and her dad is who her, her dad is. Because I feel like my kids now, uh, Julian is eleven. I feel like now she's like starting to understand what her dad does. Like, so does your daughter understand what her parents do? Oh, totally. Yeah, she totally and 
she's been ate up with it for years already. Like she is obsessed. <clears throat> uh, we'll be back to stage and Mark will be talking to somebody. I shouldn't say this either. He'll be talking to one of the boys and like they'll walk off and he'll be like, Kaya, who was that? <laughs> She'll like fill him in who it was. He's like, I don't even know. I don't know half the people anymore. Okay, you're not naming names. It's totally cool. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she, she, to she gets it. And you know, we've, she's just been around it literally since she was born and um we, we remind her often that you know what she has and the life she lives is not normal and, yeah. and you know like like these things are so we try to keep her keep her grounded you know but um 100%. it's tough girlfriend loves the camera she and she yeah. loves the oof yeah so yeah. you, you even being a female how can you have a daughter yeah. would you be okay What's, like what you experienced in wrestling would you be okay it, your daughter following your your footsteps i mean we tell her you know whatever she wants to do just like any other parent will support but i will also tell her like the truth of <laughs> things that how happen. hard it is right how, how hard it is things that happen behind the curtain you know give her all the yeah. ins and outs all, for mm -hmm. sure right i'm sure you I'm yeah sure you the could. expectations yeah. too uh, and you know and, and that's, that's really what we from her but it's like Mm -hmm. And we've already told her that. I'm like, look, baby girl, you can do it. But being the undertaker's daughter, oof, you're going to mm -hmm. have a hard road just living up to, I mean, you can do it. You can absolutely do it. But I'm just shooting straight with you. Yeah. Like, it'll be rough. Not yeah. just being the undertaker's daughter. She's also Michelle McCool's daughter. Exactly. Right. But the wrestling world and those people, they don't, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No, I, I mean, get it. I mean, yeah. I just, I don't know. I feel, Michelle, like when I think of The Undertaker, it is this consummate larger than life figure. And he carries this aura around him that transcends pro wrestling. It transcends pop culture. Uh, I, I want to tee up Giovanna and, and Kim on this. I mean, what have your husbands had to say about working with Mark Calloway? So Randy and I were watching um, the first time that Taker and Randy wrestled together. And he was, Randy kept saying over and over and over how he was like, he was so fucking giving, he was so giving. Like <clears throat> he let me do things to him that he shouldn't have let me do to him. <laughs> he was like, you know, he, he gave me so much of the match and I was so thankful <clears throat> for it. And, you know, and I don't know if you noticed at the Hall of Fame, but like Randy's never into the Hall of Fame. And <laughs> this <laughs> year when your husband was on the stage, I can't, he jumped up 10 times, like clapping. Uh, and <laughs> when he came to the top of the stage, Randy was like, yeah. And we were just like <laughs> marking out so hard for him. But Randy just thinks he's obviously just like the coolest, the man. Mm -hmm. Randy also says too, he was like, you know, no, I don't know how he feels about me. Cause when I came in, I, I was a total, uh, you know, he was super young, such an asshole and, you know, just a young guy. And, and your husband was already this, you know, figure, you know, in the back, especially to all the guys and everything. And so Randy just is like, I don't really know how he feels about me. He's like, but he thinks he's the coolest. He thinks he's the fucking man. Yeah, and Kurt loves him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kurt, yeah. Kurt, it, it's so funny because sometimes I'll be on the couch and I know what it is. Like, I know what it is. He'll be on his phone and he'll have this like little, huh. and I'll be like, what are you looking at? Usually it's something about him, okay? <laughs> 99 percent, it's something about him okay and i was like i bet you any money i know exactly what it is so i go over i was like what are you watching and it'll be the same clip of him kissing your husband and he's like he's like <laughs> i kissed taker oh when you try to make <laughs> him pop like, right such a moron it's like such a proud moment that he got away with it so I'm like, you're Great. such an idiot. Didn't he run out of the ring as soon as yes! he did it too? Yeah. And he's so like happy about that. Like he's like, oh, I yeah. got to, I kiss Taker and I got away with it. Right. And I'm like, you're an not idiot. many men that could say that, I'm sure. I it's like a proud <laughs> moment of his. Yeah. So yeah, but Kurt loves him. He said he's like, when he talks about Taker, he was so upset that he wasn't there. They asked him last minute to go to his Hall of Fame. And he's like, 
I don't have a suit. Like it was like two days before or something like that. The kid's like, you got. I go. remember. I'm like, you yeah. gotta go. I, I don't like. Get do you, you understand how much right weight now? me and Kurt put on during the pandemic? <laughs> we can't fit in any dresses right now. Kurt can't fit in any of his suits, and he's like, just go get. It. I was like, no, you gotta understand. Kurt's body it has to be custom made. Like he can't just go to freaking mm. the store and get a suit. He has to get it like you know done. Yeah. Uh, but he was so pissed off. Like he, like at night, he's like, I should go. I should go. What am I supposed to do? I, I need to respect. I like, I don't want him to think I like, I'm just like, Kurt, calm down. I think he, like, I don't think it's that, like, I think he, it's okay. But like, Kurt was really crushed that he wasn't able to be there for the Hall of Fame. They asked him two days before. And, and I'm just, I don't know. But he totally tell him he totally would have been there. And he's really still bugged out about it. Your husband was given such total preacher vibes. <laughs> like, yeah, like, right. Oh, like a preacher that cusses a little bit. Like, it was kind of like part, that's what it I told him. Awesome. Like, that's part comedian, part pastor that cusses a little bit, part yeah. motivational speaker. Like, it was great. It was so great. And he was walking back and forth with the braid. It was just like perfect. I was like, was so working nervous. at all. It was so good. He was so, so nervous. Good. Oh my gosh. What, what was that night like for you? I know you just said he lied a little bit during it, but uh, aside from that, <laughs> what was that night like? Because this is finally the culmination of that last ride, that long journey, finally yeah. cementing his place in wrestling war. No, yeah, it was great. It was, um, you know, the, the month leading up to it. And he, Contrary to what he's done for his entire life, speaking as Undertaker, totally fine. He hates speaking in front of crowds. Mm, as so Mark crazy. Hates it with a passion. Um, so he was super nervous about the speech. He was stressed out as can be. He worked so hard. He didn't want to use a prompter, which he didn't. Um, and he just, he killed it. I mean, he absolutely killed it. I was so yeah, proud of him. He was so relieved the next morning, but I, I thought it was just, I thought he nailed it. I thought it was perfect. Yeah, 100%. He looked so comfortable, too. It's crazy that he was so nervous. Yeah. I, I, preacher vibes. I was with it. <laughs> Everybody was hanging on every word. It was so I great. Know, it was so good. Like yeah. I, I told him, I'm like, look, it starts at 10 o'clock. I go to bed at 8.30. I'm not even going to lie. I might be dozing off. So, <laughs> like, Me and Kaya. You and Kaya. Was she going to sleep through that? Sleep, so it was good. He kept us awake. <laughs> That's so great. That, and, and it really was such a, a nice way to put that cap on that career yeah. um yeah. has he at any point said to you you know i nope. think i might get the bug no <laughs> no not at all do you have ever you have you wanted to ever come back and you know do one last run or <clears throat> well like the rumbles are enough <laughs> the, rum I think the rumbles are good i did this one so that colt could see mummy on tv i did the one a couple years ago for kaya this year, you know, they give you like three weeks. I'm like, oh, shoot, maybe I can turn this into a message for Kaya because she's super hard on herself. I'm like, you know, mommy's scared. Mommy's only got three weeks. Mommy might not be able to get in shape. Mommy probably won't be able to breathe in the ring. Mommy is not real sure what she's doing or why she's doing this. But mommy's going to do it. Yeah. I don't know that it even clicked or she could care less. She was just having to <laughs> such a live show. But um, that's the reason I did this last one. So, you know, I love, the, I love the ring part behind the curtain. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. How so does it cool. do when you get those reactions though? Because people pop big for Michelle McCool. They hear yeah. that music and they react big. How does that feel all these years they, later? They do now. They used to not care one bit. I don't know what's uh <laughs> I guess after you're gone for a while and you come back and the girls are a big deal. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome because Taker, we um we ran into Taker in the back uh at the hotel. Yeah. And Kurt was like, hey, this big <laughs> and then um <laughs> he's like, What are you doing here? He's like supporting the wife and oh, he's like love my man so he he it was really like i felt like he was so proud being there to support you and that was like that was cool to see that thanks he was and it was funny because you know kaya like i said she's ate up with it she wanted to go to rehearsals that started at 10 she wants to be she was in the ring with him earlier that day you know doing like old school and you know just wrestling with her daddy and um after it was over he's like oh my gosh she was so excited all day long like mm -hmm. she was crazy i'm like yes you've just never been on that side of the curtain like she's like that right the show. <laughs> like, right oh he didn't have he never had to deal with that yeah. excitement part of it. that is so cute yeah, she had on her little lay cool jacket she did um, she did i'm she surprised did. though yeah and brooklyn was like mom mom 
there's the girl with the cool jacket. Tell her to come sit with us. And I was like, honey, she's waiting to see her mom. Look, I'm happy she wore it. The first yeah. time I did Rumble when she was in first grade, you know, girls didn't even get merchandise when I was working. And so they were making a Michelle McCool wow. shirt. All right, I'm going to do this because I can get a shirt and Kaya can have a shirt. And so mm -hmm. I'm back there getting ready. I think I was in catering probably. And my mom and dad have Kaya and they come around the corner. I'm like, baby, I got you a shirt. She's like, Mr. Joe at Merch already gave me a Naomi shirt. So do you care if like I oh, like funny. really? Really kid? That's like, so funny. That's so messed up. But yeah. <laughs> I came back for you, kid. Be sure right. Can right. like wear my shirt. Kid. Now it's now you're him. feeling now you're feeling how your husband felt, right? When she could care less about him. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Who, who does she look up to today? Who does she like watching on TV? Um, she likes Bianca. She um she loves Randy. She likes um she's always doing her shoes like Riddle. I'm like, can you please just wear uh, shoes? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, let me think. She's always quick to tell people who she doesn't like. Actually, we let her do an interview with us. I don't know, probably a year ago, with, with um extra with Lo uh, Mario Lopez, and they're like, you know, besides your daddy, like, who's your favorite wrestler? She's like. Yeah, he's in my top 100, but, you know, my <laughs> he proceeds to name, like, 10, 15 other guys. I'm like, ooh, that's in your so face. Like, <laughs> that's so funny. It's uh, almost like she's ribbing him on purpose, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> totally, like, totally, totally <laughs> screws with him all the time. But she likes the bad guys. She likes the, she likes the hills. She, uh, besides Bianca. They're obviously. fun. She, yeah, they're fun. Yeah. yeah. So, is there so cool. is there a specific person that, if you can come back, that you have your eye on, like, oh, we would make it such a good story. Um, I would love to, if I were to ever come back, I would love to work with Bianca. I think she's the most athletically gifted human being 100. I've ever like seen, much less stepped in the ring. Yeah. I mean, she's just crazy. She's crazy strong. She's just yes. crazy talented. Um, but I really had fun with some of the newer girls this this past Rumble. Uh, Liv Morgan, I really enjoyed working with. Um, Zelina. But I think Bianca, um, you know, Becky would be fun just to talk trash with. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think Bianca would be the one. How does it feel to see representation of women in wrestling change on TV from what it was for you guys to what it is now? And how much does it mean for you guys, like your era, to get a chance to be part of that with these Royal Rumble appearances and stuff like that? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, we fought so hard a lot of times. Um our little era got skipped over. It went straight from Attitude Era to, you know, Evolution or Revolution Era. And right. we were that, you know, filler space. So um, to get, you know, I never need a pat on the back, believe me. I, I really don't. I, it's a blessing and a curse that I could care less about what people think about me. Like, sometimes I probably should, but, I, you know, I don't. But it's nice to get, you know, some recognition that, you know, we did play a part in that. And I don't think people would believe me, mainly because I'm Undertaker's wife, that... I never asked him for anything. He never, on, there was one occasion that a guy really popped off for no reason, but it's because he was dating somebody else that I had to beg him not to step in. I was like, look, I think I could beat this guy up if I needed to, so I don't even need you. Yeah. But, but as far as like pitching storylines or whatever, I never once, you know, and I, and I made it a point to do that, not that people would believe it, but and I, I never used him for that. Um, so it's nice to get a little bit of recognition that we did help pave the road because we just yeah. we fought for everything we had. We had to fight to get even get the Divas title, you know, and it's just it is what it is. But every you know, minute, right? Every little minute count. That's yeah, awesome. that is so cool that you're you're one of the pioneers, sis. Yeah, thanks. Yes, that is all. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. Now, uh, we like to have fun here on the Wise of Wrestling podcast, Michelle McCool. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had Ronda Rousey, and we played a newlywed game with uh, her talking about her husband, Travis. And I think people would love to hear the, the nitty-gritty details about Mark Calloway, The Undertaker. I'd love to give him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, as you know, we, we like to play with uh, dolls here on this program. And the ladies have their Randy and Kurt dolls. Well, Michelle and McCool she has, has her own McCool. action figure. I know, you have your own doll. It's so cool. I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, none of us are cool enough to have our own action figures. We're not cool enough here. to have dolls. <laughs> 
So uh, basically, we're gonna I'm gonna pitch something uh, a little prompt, and you're gonna tell us. I'm gonna do a three, two, one, and you're gonna hold up which doll uh, represents you guys for Giovanna and Kim. Just hold up the opposite doll of your husbands if it is you. Okay, let's mm -hmm. get to it. So okay, so so if if you are so wait, saying she's, that it's, she's Kurt and I'm Randy, so I would be Kurt, right? Well, well it's not you. Right. It would be. You would be saying, you know "Oh, I'm saying, John." Yes, yes, no, yes. yes. Johanna. I'm the outlaw. Here, I the put sheriff. a little post on over his face. <laughs> there you go. Love it. Okay. All right. Prompt number one here: uh, Who is the pushover parent? Three, two, one, go. Ooh. So. I mean, not so uh, much pushover, but more of a pushover than me. Okay. Yeah, how so? Because when one of the kids do something that he oh, should laugh at, he's normally laughing <laughs> I was at like, it. I was like, Kim. <laughs> I, I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> With my guys. <laughs> Sorry. I knew this was going to be confusing. <laughs> no. I just... We, we did it a few weeks ago. I thought we could pull it off yes. this week. But I guess yeah, I'd go ahead. No, we did, it with, with, we did it with no pads. No, okay, well... Just take that as, as uh, Elsa. So, so Michelle, please continue by all means. Oh, no, sorry, so, Michelle, I'm sorry. That's okay. I would not say he's a pushover, but he's a more pushover than I am. He just okay. a little more lenient. Lets him stay up a little yeah. bit late. Yeah, Laugh, yeah, yeah. Laughs when maybe their butt should be popped, you know, like stuff like that. Okay. I love that. Uh, now, yeah, you, we, we've gone over that one at length. Uh, both of their husbands are very much the pushovers here. Yeah. Um, uh, let's go. Who's... Who's more strict with the kids? Oh, Who's God. more strict? Okay. Mm. So, I forgot you're counting down. See, I oh, can't. That's okay. Count. You don't have to count that. We have no rules here. We have no rules. <laughs> that's fine. Um, okay. So uh, Kim says Randy is. Uh, Giovanna says she is. And you're saying you are Michelle. Yeah. Yes. Why is that? Randy's more strict? Um, uh, it's so weird because I'll, I'm the big mouth. <laughs> but then I'll kind of let things slide a little bit. Mm -hmm. and he he's more firm with the uh, like keeping a punishment or something like that. Oh, yeah. I'll be the I'll be the one to be like, all right, they've been in trouble long enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm you the know, I, I have to for like my type A personality. Like I need to, you know, I need to keep the ship tight and running. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's more than fair. I respect that. Okay. All right. Uh let's see. Who is the scaredy cat between you guys? Who's more likely to be uh, afraid of things? Three, mm. two, one, go. Gosh, that's G hard. G it's like what it, kind of stuff? I know, like, I just, I in it. general, your personality. Uh, well, we know with your husband, Michelle, it's cucumbers. He's terrifying. I, I hate snakes and he hates cucumbers. But other than that, I don't know. Like Cucumbers? Girl. <laughs> like you can't even have one in the room. Like every birthday, Kai gets cucumbers. cucumbers. She'll like put them under his pillow. She'll put them in his car. Why? Cucumbers. Oh, can't even smell them. Like if one, if one like I'm if trying to understand this. Like the yeah. sight, the smell. Yeah, the, well, one day. So like in mom, catering, if there's salad oh, with cucumbers he in it, it's like, it. Get no. it away. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's so one funny. One day he came home and his mom was making pickles or something or yeah or, or cucumbers cu not pickles because he loves cucumber pickles. salad cucumbers he loves pickles but he, he doesn't like cucumbers no he ate so many cucumbers one day that he got sick and ever since then just gave uh, okay yeah. that happened to me with puerto rican rum <laughs> 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 i'm afraid of that no. <laughs> good morning ladies and gentlemen uh, <laughs> okay so so we'll who's see, the we... bigger chicken yeah, who's a bigger so, chicken? Now? Like I'm I'm more afraid of like the bugs and stuff like that. Um, but like I constantly and I want to make videos of it, I'm constantly just scaring Randy. Like I'll just stand behind a wall. Oh my god. I, I, I my I'll greatest just... pleasure is like scaring my kids and what? scaring people. I love what? it. What is that? It's so weird. I will literally, but he's oblivious. He's like, he doesn't know his surroundings. I could be standing right next to him, just <laughs> still and staring at him. And he'll be doing something and he'll turn and he'll go. 
<laughs> and I'm like, I'm totally gonna make a compilation video of you sure. being scared to death. I'm saying that. that too. I, I can't get Mark with that. Like his character is true in that regard. Like, no, he's he's not scared in that regard, but we I love uh, scared by kids. And why it's so funny. It's like, ah, and this, and I hate being scared. We'll turn off the lights, we play a game, and Kaya loves it. Yeah. Like, turn off the lights and hide, and then you just try to yeah. find the person they jump out and just try to yeah. scare you. Uh, it's so much fun. <laughs> oh, I'm with you with that. Yeah. Scary hide and seek. Which of you is more likely to wear their heart on their sleeve? Who's the more emotional of you two? Three, wow. two, one, Gosh. go. That's so hard. Ivana says herself. I'm going to say me, but we're both very similar in that regard. Yeah, that's me too. We're both. So like Michelle. Uh, we both hold everything in for one. We're both very mm. stuck. Um, but as far, I mean, as far as the two of us, I know how he feels. He knows how I feel. I would say I'm a little more wearing my heart on my sleeve than mm -hmm. he has had 30 years of protecting his whole outer shell. So I think it kind of, you know, mm. carries over a little bit. That's fair. I'm going to say Randy. I'm going to say Randy. Okay. He's very, like, he totally wears his heart on his sleeve. Happy, pissed, sad. He, you know. You know. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Who said, I love you first? Three, two, one, go. Honest Kurt, to God, I remember that it had to be him. You know? <laughs> yeah. He probably yeah. played the first day in the ring. Like it had to be him. It had to mm -hmm. be him. Like I was mm -hmm. not into it. Yes. <laughs> it definitely was Randy, wasn't it, Kim? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh. You know, and, and uh was, Go ahead. No, I was just saying it and it was yeah. Kurt Giovanna. Yeah. Um he, we said it, which is crazy. We said it, and I think that was like, okay. She loves me, and that's when he got my name tattooed on him. So, <laughs> no, that's so cute. It was right before that. Yeah, no, it, it, I always was it? weird. It was like, I love you, and I love you too. Now, let's not say it for a little while because this is <laughs> happening too fast almost. It was kind of like, <laughs> what's no? going on? Yeah, yeah. But just no. so you know, it was like, just so you know. <laughs> I like it. Uh, and I got one more for you here. Who is the better cook? Is it oh, you or your husband? Three, two, one, go. Okay. So, uh, Kim, you're saying that it is you. Giovanna, you're saying My that husband it's you. cooks nothing. But Michelle, you are saying it is the Undertaker. Is he a grill master? He's a grill master. I believe that. God, I need Kurt's, a grill Kurt's, a grill. Kurt's good on the grill. Oh, yes. But everything good. else. Me, yeah, what's like this, I'll do this grill so special husband thing. to my house so he can learn how to grill, please. This is what I try to explain to I'm like, babe, you have to at least know how to grill. You're the husband. The Traker girls have an app on your phone, and like you set the temperature on your phone, and it tells you how long and when to flip it. It's not, but he is he really good no, how does he the Undertaker right. eat his steaks? Oh God, John! How does he eat his what steaks? His yeah. steaks, like 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 medium, medium well, yeah. medium rare, <laughs> medium. What? Medium. Me. Okay, all right, I respect that. Uh, <laughs> Giovanna, John thinks it's here. so weird that uh, Randy likes a, a medium well, like charred on the outside, and it's not charred on the That's... outside. Medium well is is like almost rubber on the inside. No, it's charred on the outside. Would just say like baby hints of pink on the middle. Oof. I take yeah. this very personally, Michelle. Very yeah. personal. I see I that. It's just... it's that and the wave. Yeah, we hate the wave. <laughs> That's not a here. How do you feel about the wave, Michelle? I don't think Michelle McCool has like, any. Like the wave? Like the doing wave. the wave yeah. at like, sporting yeah. events. Yeah. No, the, <laughs> she was like, the, the wave, wave. at like, like, Yeah. <laughs> like the, the wave wave? Like, like yeah, the, wave, the wave, wave wave. I feel like during a school performance last week at my child's school, who was trying to start the wave with the entire no. bleachers. While she's in front of all the parents in the entire school, like, I feel like she shouldn't have been doing the wave then or hey, trying to tell her class. There's never it. a good time for it. That's my point. Um, oh. <laughs> so Michelle, I got a question. Yeah. I'm such a movie buff, and I know we're almost at the end. Do you and Taker, do you guys, um, do you guys have like a thing like you guys binge watch movies, TV shows? Like, what's your like at home relaxed thing to do? 
No, I'm such a, I literally don't watch TV unless I'm trying to kill time on a treadmill or something. Like, mm. or sometimes falling asleep at night, I'll, I'll turn on like a show, but I don't watch it that much. We'll watch sports. Um, we did watch Yellowstone together. I'm trying oh. to, get to watch Ozark with me. Yeah, oh, another right. one. Uh, yeah, it's a good one. Um, but we like, we're outdoors. We're riding around on the mm. mule by the creek. Um, just outdoors, riding four wheelers. That's what yeah. we like. Hiking, four wheeling. Yeah, that's you yeah. love doing that stuff too. Brooklyn's been on a, a quad since she's a year and a half old. I know, seriously, they're gonna be able to kayak. She, yeah, but she's a good driver. Like, they're gonna be such yeah. good drivers. <laughs> it's crazy talking about good drivers. Like, Brooklyn is such a great driver. It bugs me out sometimes because, like, she's never crashed. She's five and she has, <laughs> like, a, yeah, her, her Razor quad goes like 12 miles an hour. And she she does not crash into anything. We put little cones around the house. I mean, like in the yard and stuff. And she zips through them. I'm like, this chick's gonna be driving better than any of my boys. That's how Colt is. He's two and a half. Yeah. And he stays on his little John Deere peg perego or however you say that. Yes. Yeah. And that has two gears in reverse. And I'm like, and he'll even like stand up now, like he's all cool while he's driving. Yeah. <laughs> Love he's it. Literally. You know, maneuver. I'm like, dang. Two, two years old, right? To yeah. be fair, he's got a mohawk, and that adds to the flavor. That helps. He's, he's, he's <laughs> a badass. Cool. He's a yeah. badass. So. <laughs> uh, well, the message your whole family's full of badasses, Michelle McCool, and we're so grateful yeah. that you joined us here uh, on Thank this you. episode of the Lives of Wrestling podcast. Uh, to no one's surprise here, uh, Mrs. Kim Warden, you lost the swear jar this week. <laughs> and uh, as such, you must give us our farewell toast. Uh, now, Michelle, oh, Michelle every, we have a yeah, tell her, John. Every single week we do uh, our farewell toast, which is the John Cena quote of the week. Uh, we take <laughs> yeah. a quote, an inspirational quote from John Cena's Twitter account, and the loser of the swear jar must read it. Okay, and, yeah, and I'm I'm trying to pull it up right now. You got yeah. okay, I got it. Okay, many voices will influ influence you on who you should be and what is best for you. Make sure not to leave yourself out of that discussion. Ooh. My my wise friend, John Cena. <laughs> That's a good one. A very that is a good one. Uh, he, Michelle he, McCool, we are so grateful. He's a different breed. He is a different breed. We are so grateful for you hopping on with us here on this week's podcast. Thank you so much. Seriously. Uh, we love having guests on. And it's, it's so cool seeing a different insight to not just one of the uh, greatest characters in wrestling history, but also yourself and, and your great path that you helped blaze. So cheers to you. Well, thank you. Uh, absolutely. Cheers, Mama. Cheers. You are the absolute bestest. I have to, my uh, fireball is empty. <laughs> oh boy. Well, uh, this, this has been I fun guys. Again, please. Five-star review for the Wise of Wrestling podcast. This week, we're not going to read one on air, but next week, we're going to get you guys, we're going to pick a winner for that contest. Again, leave us that five-star review. Tweet it at us, at Wives Wrestling, and we're going to pick a winner, and we're going to leave a little video for you. So. Yay! Uh, Michelle, is there anything you'd like to add, plug, anything uh, of that nature? I know you're pretty low-key, so... Um... Pretty simple. Pretty, um, you know, white trash redneck at heart. I'm... Yeah, girl! I love I'm it. I'm good. I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, maybe next time we can have all of our little daughters on and uh, we can ooh. talk, make them talk trash on their daddy. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on, Michelle. You're you. the freaking best. I never am. got to have a cup of coffee with you yet, but I got to have a shot with you. <laughs> there you go. We'll see you next time here on the Wives of Wrestling Podcast.